Bradisha Adelaki's talent has been mapped since she started competing in athletics as a young teenager from Tala. Scroll forward, it's nearly two and a half years since Adelaki came to America to begin her scholarship with the University of Texas at Austin. The results have been extraordinary. Adelaki is making a habit out of breaking national records and has the potential to become an all-time great. So I feel like in the past I've seen I've seen races as a threat. Like, oh, if this happens and I don't perform to a certain expectation, people would think less of me. I think less of myself. My teammates would think less of me. My coach would think less of me. But now I think of it as an opportunity. I think she's still in shock. She hasn't accepted the expectation and the pressure yet. Because she's still almost like, I don't know, like a Disney movie. It's like, like Mary Poppins. It's like, like I'm in Wonderland. Like, what is going on? I knew her potential before oh. before she even knew it. I, just, I would just tell, like the way that the coach took under under her wing, I was like, yo, Rashida, like, you're going to be something special soon. With the Paris Olympics next year, the Irish Independent travels to Austin to meet Adelaki, her coach Edric Floreal, and a few of her teammates to get the inside track on a generational talent. That's how we do it over here. Right. We ain't come to play. The bright lights of Austin awaited an 18-year-old Adelaki when she made her transatlantic move in January 2021. Within months, she did as her coach, Edric Floreal, predicted. She ran under 23 seconds in the 200 metres to break Phil Healy's Irish record. But there were some initial tough lessons in the move from Tala to Texas. It was a big change for me because I came from a kind of being like a big fish in a small pond to being like a very small fish in a big pond. And, you know, my freshman year, my sophomore year, I took a lot of losses. And, you know, I'd always like my very first race, which was in January 2021, um, it wasn't great at all. And I just it just it just bothered me for so long and like it just affected me mentally for so long. And like, I guess throughout the years, I've developed that kind of short term memory that's just so important. And like okay, this happened, there's nothing you can do, you can't cry over spilt milk, so you move on and you try and fix what thing, the things that went wrong in the previous race or the previous performance. When she just got here, I always knew that, you know, she was very determined and obviously, like, things was new, like, moving from Ireland to here, things was new and she had to get used to it and stuff like that, but after, you know, a first couple of weeks, she got used to it and she was, you know, doing a lot better. And I said to myself, you know, she's going to do great. And then when Flo told us she was going to move to the 400 and she started doing the 400 workouts, we kind of started to see that. That's like where she belonged. I feel like our team is very like multicultural, like we're all from different places. And that kind of gives that aspect of like family because, you know, we all come from all different places as I said before and you know a lot of us don't actually have family in the US so you know we, got, we get really close to each other like we have like little events like little barbecues get togethers and just to kind of keep us all intact and kind of give us that like very much family orientated vibe. I remember talking to Rashida and we were sitting there um, when I was we were finishing recruiting she had decided she wanted to come and I said well what's your foot speed and your leg length and once we get your strength levels up you probably run 22 seconds. She said, she said you're mad, uh, the, in a typical Irish accent. You're mad. I, was, I forgot how she said it. I was like, what, what do you mean? What does that mean? She said, you're crazy. I said, what do you mean you're crazy? She said, you're crazy. You understand the Irish record is 23. Oh, I was like, so? I'm not bound by the Irish record. We were having this talk for goal setting. I said, but I'm not bound by the Irish record. <laughs> you are. Well, behind me here is the Mike A. Morris Stadium where Rashida does a lot of her training. What a year 2023 has already been for her. During the indoor season, she smashed the 200 meter and 400 meter Irish records. In March, she became the first Irish athlete to win an NCAA sprint medal when she finished second in the 400 meters. Adelaki only started training for the 400 meters in October. And although she achieved something no Irish athlete has done before with her NCAA sprint medal, it became a crucial turning point in how she trains. It's funny because in the past, poor performances would unmotivate me. After poor performance, I'm like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. Like, oh, this sucks and stuff. But like now, I'm like in a, such a different mental space that like a poor performance would motivate me even more. So it's like after that happening, I was like, okay, um, I need to be able to 
be stronger when it matters. So I was like, I, like be before I wouldn't want to do 600s or anything that long because it's just, I just wasn't used to it. It was just so hard for me. But I'm like, this is what I need to like get to where I want to be. So I'm going to do whatever it takes. So I told him, I had that conversation with him. I was like, I need to do whatever it takes to be in a better position when this time comes around again. I'm hard on myself. You know, I might be a little bit too hard on myself, but I probably was, I probably used to be a lot harder on myself. Now it's, uh, there's so many more races in the future that, you know, I'm hard on myself at the time, but then I move on and I try to better myself. So um, I'm so hard on myself, I still put a lot of pressure on myself, but it's not as much as I used to. Rashida's pretty grounded. I like, like she gets angry with bad performances and then raises her game. She will train harder if she doesn't perform well. Some kids, if they don't perform well, they depressed. She doesn't get depressed. She just gets mad. Like after the indoor, she's just, amazing. yeah, she's, she was just mad. After indoor, she came to me, she said, I will not complain about training again. Because she hates 600. I hate 600. I should not have to do that. So she's like, I will never open my mouth about a 600 again. I'm done. You tell me how many I have to do, I'm just going to do it. And so far, yeah, she does. She, she's just training with a purpose. Most young athletes can't, they can't accept the fact that they can control their own destiny by training harder. You know, they just blame everything on somebody else. Rarely that somebody says, okay, I have not trained as hard as I could, and I have not done what she wanted me to do. I understand that that costs me, and I'm okay with that, and I'm gonna make some changes. And she's in the weight room, she's lifting, she hates to lift weights. It's, watching her lift weights is like <laughs> plucking your own eye out. I mean, it's just like, what are you doing? Why are you even here? She just, I just hate this. But now she's actually in the weight room trying to up the amount, and you can see her struggling, <sighs> and she's actually trying. And it made a huge difference, because I thought as you get stronger, your legs breaking apart at the end of the race won't happen as much. So she's really trying to core, think she hates doing sit-ups. I mean, she barely can hold her legs up, and she just hates it. It's not because she's not good at it. Well, maybe because she's not good at it. But she really hates it. She doesn't apply herself because she's like, this is stupid. I thought, you know, so you say, oh, this is stupid. I don't want to do that. And now she's realized that these girls are much stronger than me. And I said, well, it's your leg length. If you can have some strength, they have no chance. So she's kind of admitting that I've made some mistake and, and I'm going to stop. I'm going to just be honest and just train harder because I just didn't like the feeling of what happened. Because I think you said it before, it was the kind of training more than anything that would put you off kind of the, the fork. Yeah. What's it like and what is your pain threshold like, you know? It's just awful. <laughs> and when I was a short sprinter, there, there might, there wouldn't be as, I wouldn't be on the ground dead, not being able to breathe as often, but pretty much every single session that we do as a long sprinter, I'm like that. Like for about 20 minutes, I can't get up. Like everything hurts and I like rethink my whole existence as a person like <laughs> do I even want to do this sport anymore but then like after the pain goes away it's like okay I got some good work in and you know I'll definitely see the benefit of this later on in the season but it's definitely a lot of mental strength that it takes when you're coming like up to the like 600 500 repetition that you have like five minutes rest and look you're absolutely dead you barely finished the last rep and you still got like two more left and it's just the mental toughness that it takes. And I guess that will also help you in the race, you know, when uh, all transfer is necessary, essentially. The results of 20-year-old Adelaki now training with a purpose are clear going into the outdoor season. In the Texas Relays in April, she helped her team to record-breaking collegiate times. Then she produced an Irish record double in the space of 24 hours in Florida. After her records in the indoor season, she set two more records last weekend and became the first Irish woman to run sub 50 seconds in the 400 metres, a time that would have placed her fourth at last year's World Championships. Shawnee Miller won the 400 metres in 49.1 at the Worlds last year. So how low does Coach Flo think Adelaki can go? I think she can run 49.2, 49.3 if she actually runs it. I mean, you have to really run it. So there's going to be a point where she's going to have to make a decision to sort of abort the mission and coast in. We probably run about 49.9 or push to the pain and maintain. I'm going to maintain this pace at all costs. And then that's when you have sort of the magic. I guess it's funny because I usually go out too slow. So all season I've went out too slow. He's always got to like go out faster for um, first love. Because I'm very like, I run very reserved because I don't necessarily know how to run a tactical race yet. I have about a year of experience. So 
Um, I don't know exactly what a 23.5 would feel like. So we were training for, we were always practice, practicing how to run certain times in training. But I guess when it comes to competition, you're in a different type of environment, different type of atmosphere. So uh, sometimes everything just goes out the window. So um, that's definitely something I'm working on for the future, being able to be more tactical. And um, yeah, that's, that's definitely one of my goals for the outdoor season. Yeah, she's still trying to earn the discovery stage of finding out who I am and what I do and how good I could be. So once you figure out how good you could be and accept that, then you have to live with everybody else's expectations of you. She's not past the first step, which is how good am I and, and how good can I be? Once I think she figures that out and accepts it, then it's like, oh my God, I could be the first medalist on my island. <gasps> that would be insane. You know, so I think that part comes second. Adelaide has been spoken about as a possible medal contender in the 400 metres at the Paris Olympics next year. She doesn't use a sports psychologist, although there's one available to the athletes on campus. There are her own general expectations of herself. But how does she handle everyone else's expectations of her? Definitely something I've been saying to myself lately is like, it is what it is. Like, whatever happens, happens. Like, go out there, do your best. And if the outcome isn't what you want or what you expected, it's OK. Like, we move on and we try better for next time. So I feel like that sometimes alleviates the pressure of, you know, of my, that I put on myself and that other people expect of me. Because it's like, okay, if you don't compete, um, if you don't run a certain time or win a race, it's not the end of the world. And, you know, there's always this quote that you're not as important as you think you are. <laughs> and I feel like that's important to remember sometimes because sometimes when something bad will happen or like when you run slow in a race or when you don't win, you think like, your whole world is crashing down, but it actually isn't as important as you think it is. So it's it's just very much like, um, it's just a process of like alleviating the stress and just going out there and having fun because that's when I perform my best, when I don't have too much pressure on myself. I think it's just another race. It's up. It's more so an opportunity to show your talents and show what you've been working on instead of a threat. So I feel like in the past I've seen, um, I've seen races as a threat, like, oh, if this happens and I don't perform to a certain expectation, people will think less of me, I think less of myself, my teammates will think less of me, my coach will think less of me. But now I think of it as an opportunity. I can show people, you know, this is what I, this is what I do, and this is what I've been working on the past few months, and, you know, kind of showcase my talents. First is just your own expectation of yourself. That's easy to live by, but others' expectations, that's really difficult to live by, because it's, it's, people put, there's stuff on you, and then when you don't do it, they tend to diminish you and pull you down. So if you live by their expectation, you all live by their disappointment. So that's not, not that all this mental health, that's where it's coming from. The internet is judging and making predictions. And when the prediction don't happen, the internet has opinion. And the internet diminishes you, belittle you, embarrass you, humiliate you. And it makes it hard to come back out and play the game again. Um, but ev everybody eventually accepts that. It's really good to have someone who has confidence in, um, in me because, you know, sometimes when you're doubtful or you don't have confidence in yourself, it's always good to have that person who just kind of like reassures you and tells you, especially someone with so much experience, like he wouldn't necessarily, you know, just lie and say, oh, um, you're going to run this without actually having the evidence or having the belief that I can do so. So I definitely do trust that and just helps my own, you know, confidence. With Rashida, she like, she lets it be known that she's that, that girl, right? So she, she like, and, and, and for me, that's, that's, that's exactly what I do myself. Like, I'm gonna make sure that people know that I, I don't play games on the track when, I, when, I, when this, is, this is my work. Um, so I put so much time and effort in, we both do, that you kind of want that respect from others in, in, a, in a way that like, guys, this is, this is serious type thing. Like, we, we, we work day in, day out, mornings, nights, that, um, you gotta understand where we're coming from. Like when when we go out there, we're not out there to boast, but we'll show you like this is this is what we do. And now she's very driven. Obviously, with like Olympics around the corner, it's um it's it's a time where you know she can do special things over there. So like definitely, definitely the focus has shifted to be like you know what I wanna I wanna bring something back home. Now, one of the big events for Rashida later this summer will be the NCAA Outdoor Championships, and they actually take place on this track in June. She'll also have the World Outdoor Championships in Budapest in August. But what about her future and turning pro? I think our responsibility is somehow tell the kids to make the right decision. And even if Rashida's ready or not, if they're offering her an ungodly amount, she's going to have to. The thing I told her, I will keep coaching you, 
you'll stay in school. Nothing will change. All that changes, you're wearing a different jersey. You have the same coach, the same training environment, the same place to eat. Nothing has changed. I didn't even let you keep your locker. Nothing will change. All that changes, when you put your jersey on, it says something different in Texas. And I told her with mom and family at home, you have a responsibility to just do the very best you can. And if they're giving you that kind of money, you're going to have to take it and we'll make some adjustment and maybe I have to make sure I change my travel schedule, but we will keep looking after you, but I'm not going to let you come back and compete for Texas and pass on that kind of money just for potentially what's going to happen in the future. Do you think she could get half a mil? Like, is that for Yeah, I think so. At least? Yeah, I think so. Uh -huh. I think quarters? so. Like, what? I don't know what the rates are over I, here. I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if she gets half a million or more. That would be per year, is it? Is that the way it works? Yes. Yeah, it's typically per year. My number for me to tell an athlete not to if they can offer you at the very least three times your scholarship. Her scholarship is about 70K, plus you got medical, plus you got all this stuff. So once you include medical, all the equipment, all the travel, you're probably about close to 80K. So if they're offering you 250,000 bucks, which is roughly three times, you have to take it. I don't really know yet. You know, I take everything like a day at a time. So, you know, there's definitely been a lot of opportunities that presented themselves, but you know, it's all about the right timing. So if it is at the end of the season and I feel like it's the right time and, you know, it might be something I look into. But I'll definitely um, graduate. It's definitely something that I need to do for myself personally. You know, track isn't forever. And, you know, it's just a goal of mine to be a college graduate. And, you know, I actually want to also get a master's. So I definitely need to graduate to get a master's. She has to finish school. That, that's so, but I have a rule that if you're not finishing or finish school, I won't continue coaching you. Because the dangers are too high. You get injured, something goes wrong, and you have no education. So I've told her that in Texas, we'll continue to pay for edu education. So it's like, why not? And the mom made me promise that I will not let her leave Austin without graduating. At the University of Texas, Adelaki is studying corporate communication, and she'd like to do a master's in finance. She's also got a big interest in modeling and has done a few photo shoots. I honestly would like do modeling and stuff, but... I guess being like in the US right now and being like an athlete, when they have a lot of callings about, okay, on Tuesday we need you here, but then like on Tuesday I have training. And like also with like the visa rules, you can't really work and stuff while you're in the US. So it's, there's a lot of complications that come with it. Maybe like once I'm a professional athlete and I'm on like a working visa and I have a bit more flexibility with my schedule, maybe it's something I'll look into more then. But it's definitely something I've heard a lot from other people. You know, I do shoots here and there for some of like, some little companies, my friends and stuff, and they're like, oh my God, you'd be great at this. I can put you in contact with somebody who can da 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 I'm just like, yeah, one step at a time. <laughs> Rashida outside of track is a bit of a different Rashida. She's a bit more like laser fair, I'd say, like more chill, more relaxed, not really in the zone too much, but just likes to enjoy life. <laughs> um, and... It's a bit like it's a bit it's a bit like me. That's why I, I, we, why we get on so well. Like we have loads of um, common interests, and obviously we, in London and Ireland they resemble each other. So that's that's why we kind of like clicked really well, and we kind of enjoy the same shows. So sometimes you come around my house with um, some other friends, and we'd be watching like shows and stuff. We like the um, the lake a lot here in Austin. We go like um, on a boat sometimes and just like chill with the team, and yeah, just have have a nice vibe on that. The big picture is next year's Paris Olympics, but the more immediate aims this summer are the World Championships in Budapest, where her coach believes she can medal. And there's also getting the only Irish sprint record she doesn't currently have, the 100 metres. Definitely, that's definitely something that's been on my, on my um, radar for a while, so hopefully I'll be able to do that this year. Ideally, the biggest issue is when you're preparing to become a pro, you have to sort of adjust the schedule. So I'm working on the schedule now, trying to get her at least a couple of Diamond League meets um, because you, you have to compete against these people before you get to the championship and face them. So um, I'm working on trying to finish the NCAA, go to, uh, go, to Irish, go to Irish championship, probably run the 100, get something that's gonna be less taxing on the leg. Probably come back here, do some training, do a couple of Diamond League meets, and then we'll come back, finish the last preparation for Budapest. Mm -hmm. And then, depending on how everything goes, if it's a whirlwind between success and hopefully things go well, she's a finalist, maybe a medalist, and at that point it's like, go home and celebrate. And I also promised her a vacation in the islands that, that I'd let her take a week and go to the some islands and with her friends and have some fun. I'm just really competitive, you know? 
I compete against myself a lot as well, so I want to always, you know, bear my last time, bear my last performance, and I put a lot of pressure on myself as an athlete. So, you know, when I have something in my head that I want to achieve, and I don't achieve that, it just makes me really angry because why didn't I achieve that? What could I have done differently to make sure that I achieved this certain goal? And then that's what I want to try and focus on in the future. When it comes to Adeleke's future, watch this space.